many of you know, uh, a couple weeks ago I was spending some time in Brazil and Argentina. There was one particular morning in which I woke up. I was staying with my friend's parents. And we woke up early in the morning to this incredible sound of bird song. It was one of the most amazing things I think I've ever heard in my life. All that we were sleeping outside, essentially, so we were just surrounded by this beautiful song, this love song. And this was in the middle of Sao Paulo, which, as some of you may know, is actually one of the largest cities within the Americas. In fact, I think it is the largest city with over, I don't know, 24, 25 million people. And as I lay there, I couldn't help but think how wonderful it was that creation sang. Well, the rest of us all ran around, worried, busy about our lives. And I wondered if creation isn't actually trying to teach us something about God and God's grace. And maybe it struck me because over the past few months, I've been consumed with trying to lead the work and the recovery after the church fire and feeling all the pressure from all kinds of people to say, well, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? And inside, I struggled with that because I kept thinking to myself, it's not about what we do. It's about what God does. And I think we humans, we deceive ourselves. We think of ourselves as so much better than the animals and than the creation because we think we are the ones that are driving things. But ultimately, creation teaches us it is God who is at work. Now, that's not to say that animals don't have fears and anxieties. My cat certainly did last night when my mother-in-law picked him up and held him in her arms and said, oh, aren't you a little fat one? So, <laughs> the, poor, the poor thing. Um, it's not that they don't have worries. It's not that animals don't have fears and anxieties. You put a cat next to a steak, and I'm sure you're not going to get the most pleasant response. But what I think is so remarkable about animals and plants and trees is that they live here and now present. They live here and now entirely dependent upon the grace of God to care and provide for them. We can run around, we can build our cities, we can have all the craziness of life, but have we learned anything in it? The thing about God is God wishes and desires, and we hear this in the wonderful gospel reading today. God's desire is for you and I to rest in God. God doesn't expect you and I to produce. God doesn't expect you and I to perform. God doesn't expect you and I to be our best self now. No. God wants us to rest in God, to allow God to lead the way. Now, I know that may seem cliche, but there's truth in it, and I'm learning this more and more in my own life, particularly in these past few months. And Mervyn will relate to this. Maybe coming from my German background, we feel like we always have to be doing something to produce something, to achieve. Look at Mervyn. I don't think he ever rests. <laughs> <laughs> but is that really what we're called to? We're called to, to delight in God and to dwell with God. The other day I was reading one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver. Some of you might know of her. She's written some incredible works and Mary Oliver wrote a poem back in 2006 that I speak, think speaks well to this, but in a way that's particularly apropos to our time, because as you know, you and I are surrounded 
in a time of great turmoil. And I'm not just talking the church. Around the world, there are wars that are building up in ways that are quite terrifying in the Middle East. And of course, Ukraine, Sudan, Yemen, you name it. And Marilyn Robinson, she must have been on a walk when she wrote this poem. And I'd like to share this with you at this time. She writes, I do not live happily or comfortably with the cleverness of our times. The talk is all about computers. The news is all about bombs and blood. This morning in the fresh field, I came upon a hidden nest. It held four warm, speckled eggs. I touched them, then went away softly, having felt something more wonderful than all the electricity of New York City. I think Mary captures this sense that I'm trying to invite you to consider today. To not be consumed by all the stresses and the challenges of life, but to pause with the small, to sit still, and to rest comfortably in God. And as Job says so wonderfully, and Job, by the way, Job was a man who had worries up and down. If you ever get a chance to read Job, it's, I think, one of the best books of the Old Testament. But Job, he's on a pile of trash. He's lost everything. And he tells us, ask the animals, and they will teach you. The man who lost everything, who had every fear, every anxiety, ultimately knew that if we wish to continue on, we must entirely depend upon the grace of God. And that grace of God is a grace and desire for you and I to come, rest, and be still. Amen.